morning guys okay today we're going to be dealing with the art of stealth again and now we're going to move on to a little more in depth in the past we've talked about how to move how to avoid detection and how to do little tips and tricks to set up ways to know like the thread to know if somebody's been through here without grabbing a lot of attention how to make distracting alarms and things like the can in the and the yo-yo to go away from you to try to pull someone away from your camp and give you a different opportunity here. Now, as I've said before, but let me say it again, what I'm doing is passing on information to you. I am not in any way encouraging you to do anything that will get you in trouble, okay? If you want to use these as a self learning experience to take out and challenge yourself on a friend's land or public land or something like that go right ahead anything that you do you're responsible for not me so let's be clear on that I'm passing on this information to you what you do with it is your business okay we've talked about how to make stealth how to not have shiny or reflective or anything that's going to attract attention from a long way and we've also spoke about how we can make our vehicles quieter and etc. Now let's go a little further in and let's talk about the five E's. Okay? Quick little rundown. The five E's are evaluation, entry, evasion, exit, and extra points. Let's take each one of those. First, evaluation. You're going to X. Okay? first thing you should do whenever you're planning to go to X is do your homework. I'm wanting to go to this land right here or this site or this lake or whatever. So, and those of you that have followed my channel and remember when I did a, a uh, in-depth video talk about navigation with nothing, I touched on this and this is where I, a lot of times I use this. So let us say that I want to go to this particular piece of land right here. My evaluation, first I determine I'm going there, the next I need to know as much information about this piece of land as I can, and more importantly, everything around it. So I will be coming in on this highway, it's a county road, it does like that. That's on the north side. There's a county road right there that runs the full length of the property. On the eastern side over here, there's agricultural fields for this whole thing, okay? The southern entire part of this down here is houses throughout all of here, okay? What's over here on the western side? On the western side, there's a bridge right here and there's a creek running right there. So that's water on the western side. Now I have boxed myself in in that land, right? If I'm in here at any point and I need to exit this land, my plan to come in and out at a certain point has fallen down and I need to go another direction, I know what's in every direction, okay? So let us look a little more in depth at it. We've got the entire terrain around it. We've now figured it out that I will be probably coming in off of this road from the north, okay? What is to the south? Houses, all right? I need to come over here and go up and down that street, and I need to do a little evaluation down there. Are there a lot of dogs? Are there a lot of dogs that are not on a chain and can free roam? That could be a problem to me. Are there a lot of kids? Kids, as we spoke of, are bad. Kids wander around. Kids can be everywhere, and so they're at any time of the day, really, and so it's not a great idea. There may be some kids camping in this woods or something and give me away. Maybe a neighborhood dogs that everybody turns their dogs at 9 o'clock and they just run like a wild pack. Great security, by the way, and they're roaming all over the woods looking for running deer and strange sounds and sights, and something smells funny like me, so that would be bad. So how much down here? How many, is it a, looks like a big threat or no, nah, not so much. It's a lot of little dogs. People are going to keep them in the house. I don't see any big dogs that are running loose that don't have anything. So that would be okay. 
agricultural fields over here is this a crop that they're going to be harvesting anytime soon that could be an advantage to me the sound of background sound of tractors and stuff going through can kind of mask me a little bit and help me in what i'm going to be doing or are they planting or are they harvesting or are they whatever or is this some high dollar cash crop they're very very security conscious about that high dollar cash crop it would make even more heat on me so i need to evaluate that this road that i'm coming in up here on top how much traffic a lot of traffic, a little traffic. Is it a nice flat road or is it undulating? We're going to deal with all those points in just a moment when we get into entry. But I need to know, is this going to be the best way in and out for me? It might actually be better to go another way. We're more secure, less people, less exposure entry. We'll get that to entry. And then over here the water. How deep is this? How big is this? Is this is something that's mostly... Just a small running stream I can step across. Is it something I'd have to swim? Is it a river? Is it something that's got swampy areas that may have snakes, alligators, and everything else in there that may cause me trouble? All of this is an evaluation. Now, once I have done this, of course, I'm going to bring out my phone, and I'm going to use Google Maps, and I'm going to get an aerial view, and I'm going to look around, and I'm going to sketch me out a little map like this. And then I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to go up and down that street, just a nice afternoon drive just looking around and see what I can see better yet put my little camera up over here on the side turn it on don't be real obvious about it just turn the camera on so later on I can go back and very slowly go by because I'm looking this way I want it going by the houses so I can see the dogs so I can see the dirt bike that's sitting there that's obviously muddy that they like to go dirt bike riding but I don't see a trailer that means to go local you know, things like that. Something. Is there a dirt, uh, is there a mountain bicycle sitting there that's got muddy tires all over it? And I don't see a bicycle carrier anywhere on vehicle. It means they ride through the trails and stuff around here. Little clues that's going to evaluate, see, is this worth my time or not? Okay? Now, once I've got a good working evaluation of this whole thing, I need to pick my entry points. Now, this bridge right here and coming along this water line could be a real advantage. It could be a disadvantage too, but it could be a real advantage. Now, understand that when you're coming off of the road, on my entry, am I A, going to have to leave my vehicle? Or B, do I have someone that's going to drop me off and pick me up? Or C, do I have some place local that I could put my vehicle and leave it? Like a store or something right down here another half mile down where I could put my vehicle and then egress in through the woods to the place without attracting a lot of attention. See, things like that. Could I stop down here at this store and get out wearing, uh, you know, carrying my little backpack and I'm wearing like a running set? And I get my stick and I'm hiking down the side of the road. I look like somebody getting exercise. And then whenever I get along there and I stop and I'm checking my shoe like there's something wrong and I'm actually watching to make sure there's no vehicles coming. And then I turn, drop down by that bridge and go down and disappear in the woods. Once I'm in the woods, I put on all my concealment stuff, pull it out of my backpack and I'm in. That's an entry whether or not I need a person to drop me off, pick me up, or where I'm putting myself in and out. See, I don't want flat land for the entry point because it, you can see it a long way off. A nice, long, flat road like that, if I am doing this at night, we're going to get the time here in a minute, and I pull my car up and stop right here or... You dropping me off, stop right here. My headlights can project and my taillights can be seen for a long way, right? And so someone I can't even see down here says, why'd they stop down there? Why are they stopping? However, on the other hand, like that bridge, like some sort of terrain feature, if the tr road comes up and then it, road comes up and then it dips down to a bottom and comes back up, where this bridge is, this is where I want to get out because down here, your headlights and your taillights can only be seen down in the bottom. 
So someone down here would just see the car drop down in and then it come back up. I'm going to be in and out of the vehicle in less than 30 seconds. If you're dropping me off, I've got all my gear in my lap. I'm already set up, put the hat on, whatever. When we pull into that bottom, I'm unhooking the seat belt. And there's nothing coming up behind us, out the door and gone. In 30 seconds, I roll out and I'm gone. Re-entry is the same way. I will be sitting there waiting when you pull up and stop. I'm in the car in 30 seconds or less. Let's go. Quick, 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 quick. In and out. But this bottom will protect me because I can't project a long way. So bridges are really good places to come in and out or something like that. All right, let's deal strictly now with entry a minute. I just touched on that of a bridge right here. How about a power line going across the land? Power line right away coming through. Come off the road, go down it. Power lines are on a lease. Usually the landowner will lease to the power company a hundred years or whatever. So actually the power company owns that strip of land. The landowner has control over it but the land actually goes to the power company. And this is one of those gray areas that if you're going down that line and something goes and you have to get out, it's a fast way in and out. And if somebody says you're trespassing, you shouldn't be trespassing. Remember, we're not doing that. But if you were on such a thing, you'd say, well, that's the power company land. And now it's the power company doesn't have a problem with you. The landowner's got a problem with you. It's going to tell you to go home. See? So a power line, a, a, a pipeline, a power line, a fence that goes down through there that, you know, it's, it, there's cattle in here and they've got a fence line they maintain and clear off on that fence line. So it's a path in and out. So your entry, I want minimum fuss getting in and I'm not going to stay on that trail. So I'm going to get out of line of sight, I'm going to come in by that, I'm going to come in by that, or I'm going to come in by planted pines, nice straight rows, or that path going down, or that dirt road coming into the thing. I'm going to figure out. Now let's, back to eval a second. Let's say there's a gate right here, and there's dirt road coming into this land. On this county road. During my eval, I'm going to pull up and stop right there, and I'm going to get out of my vehicle and walk around the other side and open up the door like I'm doing something with the vehicle. What I'm looking for is tracks, vehicle tracks, my motorcycle tracks, bicycle tracks, four-wheeler tracks. That will indicate usage and what kinds of things are going in and out of this gate. Is it farm equipment going in and out of here? Nothing. Can I tell whether it's been used in a while? Got to run a piece of black thread across there right quick. And then check it in two or three days, see if somebody's going in and out of here or not. That will indicate to me the usage of that road, see. And so that's what I need to know before I get in there and find out that everybody around here's got motocross bikes and they like zipping up and down all these trails up here. That would be bad for me. So again, that's part of your eval. But how am I going to enter? If over here in the, the housing area, if there's something there that might allow me to egress in, that might be an option too. The agricultural fields, could I come in and walk down the field and enter this way into it? That's a possibility because most agricultural fields will have a road, so to speak, for the tractors and all going all the way around. It's where the tractor comes in and turns around and goes back. And so there's sort of a stomped out area of a rough, easy traversed area. Plus, would it cover my tracks real easy? Yeah. Going in and out along a fence line. So how am I entering into my target zone? I need my entry point. Next, we're going to talk about exit point. Do I go in and come out at exactly the same place? There are advantages and disadvantages to that. Advantage, I come in, I do my loop, I go right back out. If I'm leaving my vehicle, now, do I leave my vehicle? I'm going to come in at this bridge right here, let's say. Do I leave my vehicle sitting there? No. 
I put my vehicle over here on the other side of the road and around this land over here. I'm going to come out, go down, and then go in again. Anything like this is going to be that little backpack on my back. I've got me a stick, and I, I just look like a guy getting out getting some exercise. Rucking, you know. I come down along there. I make sure I got a clear night entry. Then I put on my stuff. Coming out, same thing. I make sure nothing's coming. I come out, and I come back. One of you asked, very logically, good point. What if you're coming back out, and you look at and there's somebody sitting there at your vehicle? What do you do? What is my evasion? What is my distraction? I've got hiking stuff that I wear underneath it, which is just going to be like a pair of shorts and a bright t-shirt if it's summertime or whatever. And I take all my candy and my hidey stuff, and that goes into my little backpack on the back, and I come out walking. If I look up, because I'm going to get a position where I can see it, I never want to have my exit where I cannot see my vehicle. I want to be able to come up here and look from even a quarter mile away and see all clear okay and i egress out do i change back look around maybe that little hill or whatever i go back over here and i come over the top of the hill and i come walking up you're sitting there in the vehicle looking i come walking up going howdy what are you doing on my land i'm just ruck marching sorry boss didn't mean to bother you this friend is part side of the road i get out and you know do road marches and stuff just wanted to get some exercise they're going to tell you to leave yes sir i'll leave bye no problem. And so the idea being is, you just look like somebody getting out and doing something. Now if I come out of the woods all covered in camouflage and everything else, that's going to kind of, hmm. So I want to not attract attention out here. The transition to woodland, the transition back to civilian. I don't look like anything spooky. Let's jump back to dress from an earlier video for just a moment. There's the mindset of the tactical. That you need all the camouflage and all like that. There are guys that want to wear the tactical vests and all kinds of stuff. They want to look, you know, like a green beret. Great gear. It attracts a lot of attention just by wearing it. You're going to remember that when somebody's standing out there. It's going to just stand out like a sore thumb. But if you look, you're wearing more like hunting stuff or just the highs podge of whatever like I wear two kinds of camo and whatever just look like an old guy wearing old camos and stuff like that don't stand out too much see you don't want to look too tactical if you want to have tactical stuff that's great put it in the pack and put it on when you get out there but someone on the street you want to look like just any other dumb bunny walking around okay do not attract attention to yourself. And that tactical stuff is a big flag. If you look like a low-key hunter or somebody out scouting, versus that. Okay? Now, like I said, exit point. Do I come immediately back? I want to visually be able to see my vehicle and get to it. Having other exit points. Okay? That's under your extra points. For whatever reason, I get up here and I look, and that's a no-no. Can't be done. For whatever reason. I have my backup, which is either me going to be walking down this creek way down here and knowing what's way down here, this road down here, and then calling my buddy to pick me up down there. I'll be down there in about 45 minutes. And I follow the creek down to that other road, which is on that side, which is six miles around to get to it but it's only about a 30 minute hike down that creek that way so anything here i'm over there and then we pull back up with my me and my vehicle me and my buddy to my vehicle going hey thanks with a gas can what was this on ran out of gas boss my buddy came and got me and brought me some gas perfectly logical right Pop your tank open, put some gas in, have an extra gas can with your buddy. That's part of your evade. Now, so my exit points, I will have extra points to leave. That's the extra points. Always have extra places that you can leave out of already known to you and your buddy. Even if you're going to be using your own vehicle, but you've got a buddy as a backup to come get you in case something wants. What happens if your vehicle breaks down? 
what happens if something really goes wrong and you pull in and something breaks and you're stuck here? You need a buddy that's on call that I can contact and say, okay, can you come pick me up? See? And then go from there. Okay? Now, evasion. Evasion is we've got in here and we've got to avoid the dog, the landowner, the whatever. You know, we want to minimize that if at all possible. Now, I've already dealt with some of that on how to put out cayenne pepper and stuff like that. If you've got something, remember I talked about, are there houses down here, people with dogs, whatever. That's part of my eval. I should know how to be prepared when I go in there before I ever set foot on it. I should know what I'm going to be facing or have a really good idea. Realizing that Murphy's Law is always going to be that uh-oh moment. So be prepared for it, okay? You're going to pick your target. You're going to evaluate, figure out what's on every other direction. So I know if I go north, if I go east, I go south, what am I facing? Do a reconnaissance of those to get an idea of what's there. I'm going to pick my entry point. I'll have more than one entry point if possible. Power line, bridge, this gate right here. I will have an exit of where am I exiting and an alternate exit points. Evasion. If something happens, if somebody comes up here from this, this house, kids or whatever come into the woods right here, I'm going to evade them and go away from them and head back toward my vehicle to get out of here. Okay? Extra points. Have extra entry and exit points planned ahead and have extra points. Have someone plan to come get me in case something goes badly wrong. Okay? So that's the basis of the ease. Now, time. Okay? Daytime. advantages. I can see the ambient noise of the woods is louder. So I can see and avoid easier because I can see better. Okay? Maybe an advantage. What time of day? Okay? If it's a farmland over there, then that's really from about sun up to sundown. Any time in there, you're going to have the possibility of the farmer coming and checking on his fields, feeding his cows, whatever, going up and down that, or they're planting, or they're whatever. They're going to come by and spray, or they're going to come by and do a, whatever. So agricultural fields and agricultural stuff from sun up to sundown, you got to keep an eye on it. Okay? Not true at night. Agricultural fields is kind of abandoned after sundown. Farmers work really hard all day, and so after that, they're going home going to bed. They're taking a shower, and they're going to bed because they got to get up early. Are the cows that they got to milk, that might be a 24-hour operation. Are there chickens, that might be a 24-hour operation. Is it a major pork farm, that might be a 24-hour operation. Again, part of your eval. Night time, 3 a.m., till 4 a.m. Good time to go in if you're going in at night because that's quiet enough, everything's gone dormant. That's one of the reasons a lot of the guys come out and get on deer stands along that time. To get in there, get settled, let the woods go back to normal and being quiet before the sun comes up so that you're in position. That's the reason people put deer stands out and stuff like that and come in so early, the shooting houses and etc. Okay? Daytime from about 6 a.m. till about, say, 7 p.m. During that time period, you also have from 11 to 1 lunch. That might be a good time because people are gone. People that are working in these things are leaving to go get lunch. So there's a give and take up of these roads. So if I'm looking to have that canyon road kind of quiet, 
I don't want to be there early in the morning because that's everybody rushing to work. I don't want to be there around 5 o'clock because that's 3 to 5 o'clock. That's everybody rushing home and the school buses are running and everything else. And I don't want to be out there about 1 o'clock because that's when that farmer's sending his kid to go to go get food down at the local whatever. You know, because they decided they wanted burgers or barbecue sandwiches or something. So avoid those times. Avoid people going to work, people coming home, lunch times. Okay? That's when traffic's going to go up even on these back roads. But at like 3 a.m. or so, there ain't no traffic on them roads to speak of. I can egress in. Now, if I'm going to be staying on site, like camping out, I'm going to make my hide. And I'm going to stay here, and I'm doing whatever recon and eval. I want to come in late, late, actually early, 3 to 4 in the morning. I want to come in, be dropped off, and disappear in the woods. Get in there, find my place. I can be quiet and sit. Let the woods wake up, let everything come up. Let the 6 to 8 a.m. take place where everybody's going, whatever, see what's going on in the woods, and then I'm going to do my sneak and peeking. After, say, 3 o'clock, I'm going to be kind of quiet again because that's when a lot of people are doing that late, late day eval and they're running down there to check the pond or whatever. See? What time of the week? Well, of course, Monday through Friday is schools in session and people's in work. So that kind of goes together, so there should be less people out here. But of course, on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, everybody's out in the woods. Is it coming up on hunting season? Are people coming out and putting out deer stands, etc.? Is it turkey season? And that's where you don't want to be in the woods, is turkey season. Because those hunters are wearing full camouflage. They have to come in and be dead silent. They're doing what you're doing, and they're sitting there stationary. You won't see them. And so you need to avoid going in the woods to do your recon during turkey season. Now, those deer hunters, they make a lot of racket. It would be easy for you to come in on public land or whatever to do one of these recons during that time, wouldn't it? Because you already they expect you to be wearing camouflage. They expect to see trucks left side of the road on the edge of public areas. They expect to see somebody go into the woods and not come back out. So that's a great time to practice your stealth is on public land during hunting season. Of course, you got to wear orange or whatever, follow your local laws. But being able to get in there and do your recon and not be seen etc. That's a great time to do it. And practicing looking for deer, looking for wild game, looking for wildlife. Trust me, they're a whole lot tougher to find than people. And a whole lot tougher to avoid than people. They're geared into it. And so if you get good at sneaking up on deer and stuff like what we used to call stalk hunting, people is no problem at all then. So time of the day can make a big deal. That's the reason evaluation. Are these houses mostly retirees or people that work? Are there a lot of kids there? Are there, like I said, animals like dogs and stuff running around loose? Are there any large game animals that run around here a lot, like hog and stuff like that? How about, you know, cows and bulls? Cutting through that pasture at 1 o'clock in the morning with that bull that's a little light rate can be a real eye-opening experience. Trust me, I've had it where I didn't think there was anything in this pasture and I had cut through this pasture many times in the middle of the night going from A to B because it was to go from this county road to get to this place over here was 12 miles to cut park here go over the fence cut across this 200 acres of pasture go up on the county road on that side and walk up was a little over a mile and I could cut through there and get to where I was going without having to make that long trip. And then they decided to put the bull in that pasture, and I didn't know it, and I was about halfway across. When that big sucker, that big Brahma, he come bellering and come up out of that bottom where the water was. And it was a real interesting thing. You can't outrun them. You just got to out bluff them. But I got out of there, but it was... <laughs> I'll never forget that. You feel awful small and insignificant looking at an animal close to a ton 
and he's real upset because you are in here and his ladies are in here and now I wasn't even in, hadn't been any cows in this pasture the last five times I've cut through it but there was now uh, remember that eval I didn't do my eval now don't get complacent don't take anything for granted every detail okay so middle of the night it's a lot quieter etc a red lens flashlight where you can just see just a few feet in front of you you can fade in there get into position and wait for the sun to come up that way you're well away from your entry point coming out same thing i can make my little camp like i talked about out of sight out of mind on my hammock set my little alarm thing have it wake me up about 4 a.m i can break down my camp and egress out so that when i come out on that canyon road at 4 15 in the morning and there's nobody out here i transfer my stuff into my pack like i said before i come out i've got my thing and i come walking back up to my car look like i've been out on a long ruck march would that be odd at 3 in the morning? Sure is. But it won't attract as much attention as you think. And so that's one of the things. So daytime or nighttime and what time during the week is school out? A lot more people out. Is there any kind of social activities like is there dove hunts being planned or things like that? Or in the springtime is this is this on a major path going to a big lake that people are night fishing like for crappy and stuff like that or people are going to be running down there to be there at dawn you know you think this is going to be an abandoned road before you ever insert and you'd come down there in your target time and spend a little time on that road just pull over on the side of the road and turn everything off and sit there a minute and listen was there a lot of traffic on the road was there any other thing? You know, a place that I was looking at one time, I thought, that, man, this would be pretty good. You know, I never saw nothing because I always went during the day. And so I went down there about my old 2.30, actually about 3.30 in the morning. And I pulled off on the side of the road and turned over and turned it off and just had listening. And in the next 45 minutes, I counted 10 boats on trailers coming by because there's this big major lake down there and they were going down there to be there at dawn to go fishing it was springtime they wanted to go fishing and so that road was just hot with pickup trucks and big lights and everything else running down there and me sitting there with my lights off i had two stops so you broke down no nah, i'm waiting on my brother to catch up no big deal my vehicle sitting there would attract attention and any time i thought it'd been fine but it wouldn't then because of the traffic you got to do your evaluations widen your scope beyond a look at the terrain b what's on the other side of these woods c how much interaction does that have with these woods okay how sensitive is it if i'm in here going to hunt hogs with a bow you know squealing hog don't attract a lot of attention does that neighborhood over there have dogs that if I harpoon a hog and that hog goes squealing, is 10 dogs going to show up from that neighborhood over there? Me trying to get a 500-pound hog out of here. Can I do it by myself? No. Things like that. What am I doing? Why am I doing? Am I on, if I'm on public land even, how much am I going to attract other hunters, other people like that? I use these techniques for hunting because I don't want you to know where my honey hole is where I go fishing. Or that place that I've gone in there and quietly helped groom the deer to be the biggest and fattest possible. And so I don't want you to know where that's at. I don't want it to be easy accessible. I want you to think it's too hard to get in there. That makes more for me. See? And so these techniques can be applied to that. I need to do my evals, have my entry and exit points plans when it goes bad other points i can exit out of someone on standby to come pick me up being able to transition out of my camis and be into civilian clothes and just come walking up with a stick if there's somebody sitting there at my car things like that 
this is a game of chess. You have to think every move through and think of if it goes wrong, how will I deal with it? That's under the extra points. If this happens, then what? If that happens, then what? Work through it. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. There'll be more videos to come. We're going to talk very shortly about hides and how to make camouflage camps and things like that. That's coming. That's once you're in there and now you're not wanting to attract attention. And we're going to talk about that. But that will be in an upcoming video. Uh, do me a favor and hit that like, share, and subscribe before you go. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much for supporting my channel. Until next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.